This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. This portion of Lee Pitts Live is brought to you by Hodges University, celebrating 25 years of educating Southwest Florida. Southwest Florida, welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. Where are we again? We're at the Children's Network of Southwest Florida, one of America's great organizations as it relates to taking care of our children in adoption and, and uh, foster parenting. I know Nadere could get more details on that, but I'm just a TV talk show host. We're so thrilled to have here today Charles Daly, bump you in. Charles, this is certainly not your first time bumping on the Lee Pitts Live show. You're a candidate for District 6 for the Lee County School District. Uh, me saying that this is not your first time bumping on uh, Lee Pitts Live says that you have always been a person who c comes out and communicate with the community. Where did that come from? Well, Lee, first of all, I would like to commend the, uh, the Children's Network for outstanding job that they do to our uh, most vital commodity, our children. Um, and uh, in response to your question, um, I, I think that that comes from my grandfather passed on to my father, uh, passed on to us who was, both were prominent ministers uh, in Indiana and in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, uh, my father was a, a student advocate uh, and uh, so it's um, my mother was a uh, was a, was a school teacher, and, and so it's just it's, it's only right to do in terms of reaching down, pulling up, and helping others. Do you think that uh, you putting your hat into uh, run for Lee County School District District Six? Do you think that that change you you being uh, elected into that position? would change the whole scope of how the school district goes about deliberating, particularly as it relates to people of all ethnic backgrounds? Uh, most definitely. Just my mere presence makes the change. Uh, for, for years, throughout this entire history, uh, we've never had um, uh, person of color. a person of color that has been elected to serve on the Lee County School Board. Now, every time I think about that child, I think about like we we are here in the 21st century. This is that's like old 1930s stuff. Absolutely. How how could we be a modern city, a modern county, and this has happened this long? And you have been working as an administrator, a principal, all those other positions, sitting there watching this go on for all those years. What what wait what's been what what's, what message does that send to the community? Well, it, it sends a message that we're not looking through the eyes of others. Mm -hmm. Even though you talk it, but your commitment, your actions don't illustrate it. Finally, finally, the citizens uh, in Lee County finally stepped up to the plate and said, we would like to have a diversified board that deals with all, and all means all. That's the problem that we've, not, that we, that we've experienced over all of these years. Let's go to the, uh, the cloud, let's say, that everybody talks about when they talk about Charles Daly. Your tenure at Dunbar Community School. Now, I saw you work at Dunbar Community School. I know the great work that you did at Dunbar Community School. Would you say that there are powers that be or trying to taint your reputation with some things that are not true that happened at Dunbar Community School? Or what is true and what is not true? Well, uh, I would say in, in, in the short scope is that uh, in 2012, uh, I was selected as the Administrator of the Year for the State of Florida as the Principal of Dunbar Community School. Uh, all of my evaluations have clearly reflected outstanding jobs. We have established uh, community relationships, community partnerships, by the way, which is a part of their strategic plan. So I, I, I am certain that, that in the political game, this is a way of tainting the, the image, but there is one who sits high and looks low, and who knows the work that we've done, community members know, the citizens of Lee County know that I will fight and will continue to fight and uh, to do what's best for our citizens. Were you involved in any way with cheating on tests, FCAT tests, not FCAT, but GED tests at Dunbar Community School while you were principal? I'm glad you asked that. The answer is no. There is a policy. Read your lips. No. No. <laughs> okay. There is a policy 5.29 of the, that, that is the board policy, which they choose to follow when they so desire. And that policy says that if there are issues that come about that could create a problem, you should let the person in charge, the principal, know. Well, no one let me know that there was an issue at all. 
I did not find out about this issue until the 17th when Dr. Pruitt informed me. The assistant principal knew, the clerk typist knew, but no one chose to tell me about it. Mm -hmm. And so I, th that, is, um, that is a major, major flaw that, that we are really seriously looking at. What do you say to those people who say that the former superintendent of the Lee County School System who was basically fired, Dr. Graham, she took the bullet for Charles Daly? Uh, I say that she took the, the bullet for all that was right. Um, uh, Nancy Graham was an outstanding, is an outstanding educator. And rather than be a part, and she wasn't fired, let, let, let's be real clear, she wasn't fired, but rather than deal with the continuous micromanagement that has been taking place with this school district for the past, with at least two of them, for the past seven, eight years, she has decided to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I can do better. It's not worth my health. Now, I've been sitting here hosting Lee Pitts Live for at least 25 years. You know that. I've interviewed all those superintendents over that 25 years, and it could have been at least eight of them. It seems like every three years or so, less than three years, superintendents turn over, turn over. The only thing that's pretty much remaining constant is the school board. What, what does that say about the school board? Well, I would say that you need to look at those members that are currently on the board now who were in place during those seven or eight years. And there is one person on that board that every time the recommendation came up for an, an investigation, she was the one that, um, that, uh, uh, that requested it. I think that what happens here, now the life, expand, uh, expand, uh, the life expectancy, uh, I'm sorry, for a superintendent is anywhere from three to five years. Oh, really? Yes, that's, 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 that's the goal, that's the current one. But in this particular case, uh, we have targeted superintendents uh, because they have refused to comply with the micromanagement of school board members. Their job, their job is the hands-on fingers off approach, hands-on policies um, and those kinds of things that, 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 it, that support the system and fingers off the day-to-day -day operations. No investigations by, by uh, school board members. If you become a school board member, you would have only one vote. How, how will you be able to change that? Uh, I think my presence changes it automatically. I think my presence on that board sends a message that the citizens of Lee County are wanting change. I think my voice behind the scene will be very clear and very strong. People know that I'm not one to stand up. Uh, I am one that stands up and says the truth and, uh, and, and they know that I will confront uh, the lie and the injustice that, um, that, uh, that prevails. Now, throughout this interview, we have your phone number and your website appearing on the screen. Just know that uh, when people go to your website and call you on that phone number, they can get in touch with you and then they can work from there in terms of getting involved with your campaign? Absolutely. What has been the response from the community so far to your campaign? We have, we have been received quite well. I received information today that uh, our campaign, in terms of monies from individuals, uh, has been the largest of any uh, of any candidate out. There's another who has received loans, uh, but 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 loans. It's not a commitment from from the citizens. When the citizens give, they are making a strong statement that they believe in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Now, 30, 31 years you you've been an educator. Uh, what does that do for the teachers? the school staff, the bus drivers in turn, because I know in those years you worked in a lot of capacities. When they look at a person like you in that position, what should they see in you that says he can relate to what we are experiencing right now? I've been there. I have been there. I've served. Uh, I've served as a teacher, as a coach, as a coordinator for equity and reassignments. I've served as director of uh, adult community ed, I served as principal, I served as dean, uh, I've gone into schools that, into schools and departments that have issues and have straightened those out. Uh, I am one that uh, goes in and solves the problems and then moves forward. The position that you're running for right now is a two-term, a two-year position, right? Yes, yes. What is your position, what's your thoughts on uh, individuals being able to serve for two terms would be a total of eight years? 
Do you like that? I, I think that any time you, you have individuals or a person that holds a position more than two terms, it, it, that person creates uh, 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 an image of I control it, I own it. I think that we always need to have new blood that comes in, new ideas that need to come in. I chose to run for a two-year term because it's the first that, that we will have a representative of color. I think that I need to prove myself. And by proving myself within those two years, which I will do, will clearly send a message that others can come behind me. It seems like you're in a unique position. One, I know you and been knowing you for many years. You don't want your campaign to be based on race. No. You got the background, the credentials and all that way, that way exceed the qualifications to be a, on a school board. However, you still don't shy away from color. How, how are you managing that? Like a President Obama in some kind of way? <laughs> I, I, I tend to, to be myself. Uh, I have served on, in many capacities uh, across this country. Uh, I, I serve with Advanced Ed that goes out and they, we do accreditation visits for districts that are acquiring uh, their accreditation, which I have served as associate lead, a lead, as well as a team member. So I know what it takes for schools um, uh, to be good schools. I know what it takes for district to become good districts. I have that method. We have uh, an accreditation process which deals in five standards. And, and, and if we follow those standards, which the district in a lot of cases has not done, mm -hmm. I, I think that we will, we will be proactive rather than reactive, which is a problem that the district has, has had. Sesame Street, this for me, of course, I'm a novice, just a conscientious observer. What are high stakes testing and common core and what's your position on them? The, the district is now doing what we call a standards-based testing. Uh, as in, in compared to the Common Core, um, and, and 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 rather than look at the names Common Core standards takes or whatever it, what, what, uh, standards based testing, I think what we need to do is to look at what works for each each of those those tools for education. We take the best out of them, and then we develop our own. The high stakes testing is a piece where. When, when I, I, I've got a granddaughter who uh, was in third grade, and my daughter told me, uh, uh, Dad, um, Trinity is biting her, biting her nail, biting her, the, the, the skin around her nails. Um, because if she had failed that third grade test, she would have failed, she would have been retained in the third grade. That kind of pressure placed on kids. Kids need to understand or need to be explained what assessment is. And they don't need to fear that. They, we need to do a better job of, of informing and preparing our stakeholders. We need to do a better job of, of preparing our teachers. We need to do a better job in preparing our students, our parents, and our teachers. And, and if we're going to do that, those are the stakeholders in the school district. We have to, that's a part of, of the district's strategic plan, to become more actively involved in communicating with the public. One of the areas that I have been criticized the most in is establishing partnerships, especially in the community that I last worked. I will continue to establish partnerships. I will continue to promote those kinds of things because it's right to do. And it's still we, until we start doing right, then we're going to always be on the, on the reactionary part of, uh, of, 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 of the equation. Charles, it's been a pleasure having you come here join us on Lee Pitts Live. You know, always been a pleasure, Lee. And you know you're always welcome on this show. I'm looking forward to it. Good luck in your campaign. Thank you very much. Stay right there. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Charles Daly and all the fine people who are associated with his campaign who are doing it. We'll be right back when we talk to the corporal from Cape Coral Police Department.